I'd like to call to order the sixth meeting of the 2014-2015 Common Council. Would the clerk read, please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. Imagine a place where everyone chooses to bring energy, passion, and a positive attitude every day. Thank you. Would you please call the roll? There are 12 present. Um, Alderman Heideman and Lassard are excused. Alderman Van Akron and Matichek are not excused. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is uh, the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, there are no resignations or council appointments this evening, so we'll move on to a presentation by the Chamber of Commerce Tourism Economic Impact Update for Sheboygan County. Amy Wilson, the uh, Tourism Director, is with us tonight. Amy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Vanderstein, Council Members. Um, I'm going to review the economic numbers, and most of these, actually all of them, go through through 2013. If you're not aware, every year the state commissions a third-party uh, research company out of the East Coast that does um, all of the large destinations around the world, including Disneyland, and they bring back this report every year, the, in May of every year for the prior year. So this will give you kind of a standing on where we are right now. So we'll review kind of the Wisconsin overall look first and then the county and then drill down to the city. Um, visits to Wisconsin destinations grew 3.5% between 2012 and 13, and hotel room demand grew about 2.7%. The average daily rate also increased by about 3%, and it helped grow the overall hotel re room revenue by 5.7%, 5, 5 and this is a statewide trend. So in Wisconsin, leisure travel comprises about 88% of, of visitor spending. So leisure travel, weekend getaways, family getaways are still king in the tourism markets. Overnight visitors comprise 67% of visitor spending at $7.3 billion across the state in 2013. Day visitors spent about $3.6 billion. So Wisconsin spending trends for the year um, visitors spent more than $2.7 billion on lodging. That was increased, almost a um, little over 4.5% from the prior year. Um, more than $2.7 billion was also spent on food and beverage. And this is interesting because this is the first time that food and beverage, increasing 6.2% in a year, has leveled off with lodging. So people are really spending money on culinary experiences and food. Um, retail captured almost $2.3 billion. That's an increase of 2.3%. And the bottom one, recreation had the largest increase percentage-wise in visitor spending at 6.3% with nearly $1.4 billion. This bottom line, the recreation increase, has been on the rise for a trend about the last five years. And this is the one we're really interested in because most outdoor and recreation activities, while they don't cost much, some of them do have fees. And this is where Sheboygan, in particular with the waterfront asset, has a real opportunity to capitalize on this, along with the bike trails. So in Sheboygan County, um, Sheboygan captured over $198 million in visitor spending in 2013. Um, that was an increase from the prior year, a little over 6%. $329 million in total business sales resulted from tourism activities across the county. Over 3,300, actually almost 3,400 equivalent full-time jobs were attributed to tourism activities, and over 71 million in labor income was derived from tourism. The nine counties along the uh, Lake Michigan shoreline capture, and this, this trend always stays the same, about 30, somewhere between 31 and 33 percent of the state's total visitor spending every year. In 2013, it was approximately $3.4 billion. Along the nine, uh, out of those nine counties along the lake shore, Sheboygan County ranked fifth. 
um, with close to 199 million in visitor spending, ooh, which was, I'm sorry, 4% growth over 2012. Sheboygan County's growth in visitor spending between the two years ranked third among all nine Lakeshore counties. And I believe the mayor gave you a handout um, that shows some of the top counties that was printed in one of the uh, business news, did you say? So these are the nine counties along the lakeshore, and it shows you where we rank in visitor spending, Sheboygan County ranking fifth. Um, over the last two years, we've been increasing slightly on Racine County, which actually captures more day business, probably because it's geographical location. Um, so actually our visitor spending, we're leveraging our overnight assets better. Um, Door County, of course, they're third, 289,000, and keep in mind, while they're third, Door County has 120,000 units a night to rent out. And, and countywide, we have just over 1,800. <coughs> so this is a visitor spending trend from 2010 when city tourism was re-embedded into the Sheboygan County Chamber. Um, that year, we captured 169.7 million in visitor spending. And each year so far, we've been increasing in 11, 180, a little over 180 million, 2012, 191 million, and almost 199 million in 2013. So over that, those, that period from 2010 to 13, the increase is about 29.2 million in visitor spending. And this is what that looks like when it's graphed out on a regression line. And this is eight-year room tax trend. So you can see as visitor spending rises, so does room tax. The dip in about mid-2009 is when we were at the peak of the recession, and we've been climbing ever since, growing very nicely <coughs> out of that um, recession era. And that's the basic economic impact report for this year. We'll have new numbers in May. Do you have any questions? See no questions. Thank you very much, Amy. We really appreciate the information. There's nobody signed up for public forum this evening, so we'll go on to the mayor's announcements. First of all, uh, this is going to be our last meeting before the 4th of July, and last year there were some problems with people um, saving their place <coughs> for, uh, along the parade route on 8th Street and Michigan Avenue, and the police department has said that uh, people can do that after 5 a.m. on the day of the parade, the 4th of July. So they'll be getting some additional publicity out, but we wanted to mention that so there's no problems this year. And um, we also uh, want to mention that today I uh, had the pleasure of attending with Alderman Hammond the uh, acuity dedication of the uh, symbol of freedom, the new flag and flagpole. And it was just an amazing ceremony. They had a, a flyover with some parachutists coming in, uh, very classy. And it's, it's really neat that Acuity has, uh, has decided to make this, uh, this a reality and, and make Sheboygan stand out with the tallest flagpole in the nation. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to pull um, 2.4. Um, and then on the remaining, I would make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions upon their passage. Second. Okay, we'll deal with 2.4 first. What's your pleasure with 2.4? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, move to accept and file um, and pass the resolution, um, however, a contingent upon the city appropriating sufficient funds for the closing um, of, the, of the property. Second. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll on passage? Okay, we'll do it on a voice vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And then we have a motion on the remainder of the items in the consent agenda. That's 2.1 through 2.16, other than 2.4. Um, that's open for discussion. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ty, did you? Ty, did 
you do yours? It says I voted that. Okay. Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Next is report of officers. Item 3.1 will lie over. Items 3.2 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 4.1 through 4.7 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing recommending denying the beverage operator's license 0370 based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the licensed activities. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Is Jeremy Pinot here this evening? He is here, so I'd ask that he come to the podium. The committee denied his license four to zero um, due to a pending, basically due to a pending disorderly conduct that um, alcohol was involved in that instance and he is applying for his alcohol beverage license. Did you have anything <coughs> you'd like to say? Um, it's just that we, I was out earlier in the night, you know, I wasn't, drunk or we were, I had a couple of drinks and I went home um, and that uh, you know I have a 10 year old daughter who I need this job you know I, I have to pay child support and with this job it will, be, it will become full time if I can get my beverage license um, I, I do live upstairs from Sly's Midtown Saloon um, so it's you know we one girl has surgery among probably one guy will be leaving us so we need a full time position and I just Kind of need this for my daughter, for one, and for myself for two. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. I guess I'd just like to um, probably give you the whole background. Um, in 2010, he did have two misdemeanor dispensing drugs without a prescription, and in 2013, there were two um, counts of petty theft as well as the disorderly conduct that's pending. Um, he is working at Slides. He's been there since December, Jan December, January, something like that. So. Um, that's, that's what we decided on based on that information. Okay, any other discussion? Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, uh, Alder Person Vanderweele, he, if my memory serves me correct, he'll still be able to work, but he won't be able to close. Is that correct? He can close. He, just, does, he couldn't be by himself. Pardon me? He couldn't be by himself. He could close if there's another person there. But, if, but he can't be alone. Correct. Okay, thank you. Alderman Koth. Thank you, Mayor. And am I assuming that the police department gave a negative recommendation? They did not give a recommendation. They did not give a recommendation. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no other discussion, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Nine eyes, three no's. Motion passes. You can step down. Oops. Item 5.2 is an RC by Public Works recommending and authorizing entering into a contract for the resurfacing of South A Street from Kentucky Avenue to Union Avenue and passing the attached substitute resolution. Um, Alderman Boren. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Motion's on the floor. Is there any discussion on it? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Uh, item five point three will lie over until July seventh. <clears throat> Under ordinances, 
Item 6.1 will lie over. And item 6.2 through 6.4 will be referred to various committees. Item number seven is under charter ordinance uh, is 7.1 and that will be referred to salary and grievances and committee of the whole. Uh, there are no matters laid over. And next is a notice to discharge the finance committee regarding RO number 54 of 1415. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to discharge finance of RO uh, 54 of 1415. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That'll uh, be a roll call vote then. Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, for the people that are watching at home, could you give a little description of what we're voting on here? I think we're accepting a donation. Or is that? No, all we're doing is voting to discharge finance. Okay, thank you. All eyes. Motion passes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file um, the RO 15 14 15, um, accepting the sponsorship contribution from Festival Foods for the fireworks for 14 15 and 2016. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The uh, item is on the floor. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to again. Thank Festival Foods for the generous donation. Um, <coughs> the donation is $40,000 a year for the next three years to help ensure that our 4th of July celebration and the fireworks go off uh, smoothly for the residents of Sheboygan. So again, uh, thank you very much to, to Festival Foods. Thank you for that discussion. I'd like to, uh, if there's no objection, call Chad Pelichick up to tell us a little bit more about this matter. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Alderman Hammond. I just wanted to mention that this is kind of momentum year for us because um, as a document in a prior council meeting, Johnsonville has graciously up their uh, contribution towards the fire, towards the 4th of July celebration. And so as Festival Foods and the mayor and myself um, had made a trip up to Green Bay to meet with Festival Foods to um, get them to really come on board and take over <clears throat> the fireworks display. So... Um, this is a forty, fifty thousand dollar fireworks show that they put on on behalf of the company, uh, their facility, and their firm here in the city. And as part of that, on June twenty sixth, we're having a press conference on the um, steps of City Hall to really kind of give some further contribution and, and support to our these sponsors and, and some notoriety for what they've done. Because as um, most people may not know, but the entire fire, the entire Fourth of July celebration that the city puts on is not funded by city tax dollars. It's really funded by uh, sponsorships and room tax revenues. So this is this is kind of a big deal for us to get um, right around a hundred thousand dollars a year from different entities in the community. Community Bank and Trust is another one that has raised their contribution this year to ten thousand from seventy five hundred. So. Um, this allows the activities to happen in the community, and we thank the sponsors for that. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? See none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Oops. Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. 10.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Mary Ann Dolson for alleged damages to her basement when the sewer main clogged and flushed back up in her basement. That'll be referred to the finance committee. 10.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That'll be referred to the law and licensing committee. Next item is a closed session. Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session are the exemption provided in Section 19851E Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of deliberating the selling of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for a closed session? All eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a five minute recess and reconvene.